Thank you for tuning into Seriously Podcast. You can find us on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and Google Play at Seriously Podcast, as well as on the Indie Creative Network. Please like, rate, review, and subscribe and spread the word. Let the people know about your new favorite podcast. Thanks again for tuning in and enjoy the show. Seriously Podcast. I'm Mary. I'm Brittany. Today we're talking about the season finale of Giants. And with us today we have the amazing creator, writer, director, and he also plays Can't Win Malachi, <laughs> James Uh-oh. Bland is with us <laughs> via <laughs> Skype. Welcome and thanks so much for joining us. Woo. Uh, no problem. <laughs> thanks for having me. Can't win yes, Malachi. That's the he... first. <laughs> He was struggling, but we're gonna we're gonna talk about we're it. We're gonna talk about his, his life, okay. his struggle. Um, so first and foremost, what was the very first web series you ever watched or got like hooked on? Oh man. Ah, uh, you know, I've been in this web series game for a minute. Mm-hmm. So I would say I was actually doing a web series before I knew it was a web series. I used to do this <laughs> show called My Brother's Keeper. Oh. Uh, I did that show in college, and so I would say that was the first web series that I watched and I got and I got hooked on. But we weren't calling it a web series at the time. We were calling it an independent television drama series. Oh, and we were uploading the content to Facebook, mm-hmm. like promo content, uh-huh. but but. but I don't even think we had it on YouTube at the time. We were just putting it on DVDs, and we were trying to sell the DVDs like you would do an independent film. Mm. But My Brother's Keeper was probably the first web series. Oh, wow. That I watched. Yeah. Um, so tell us how you got started in film and why you chose this like creative path. Yeah, so um, I went to Florida a and University. Mm-hmm. I studied business. I did a, a a couple of business internships and was like, nah, this ain't for me. This is not it. I always had an interest in film and television, but my only outlet for it growing up was doing church plays because I'm 6'5", and everybody thought it was a good idea for me to be a basketball player. And so I was like, cool, you know, I'll play basketball. But when I actually uh, went to college on an academic scholarship, and so it freed up my time to figure out what other things I wanted to do. And so I stumbled upon uh, Florida State's film school, and I started auditioning for student films as an actor. And that eventually led me into wanting to work behind the scenes in film And I eventually did my my first film my senior year in college. And that film pretty much solidified my desire to be a filmmaker. And so I made the decision to move to L.A. right out of undergrad. And I got to L.A. and I hit the ground running. And I've been making films ever since. Oh, wow. Nice. So kind of like Malachi's story in Giants. Kind of. Not really. You know, Malachi, Malachi did the corporate thing. Oh, true, he, you true, know, true. He got a, got a corporate job. And Malachi isn't necessarily an artist or a mm-hmm. filmmaker. He's a writer. But, yeah, he's trying to figure out what his purpose and what his calling is. I figured that out pretty early. Right. At least when I say early, like sophomore, junior year of college. Mm-hmm. And I've been on this path ever since. Um, and so Malachi is still trying to figure out his path. Got mm-hmm. you, got you. What inspired you to create Giants? Uh, you know, uh, I really wanted to do my own show. I was working on this web series called First for about Ooh. two Speak years. On it. <laughs> and <laughs> I, you know, I learned a lot. Uh, and but finally, but it wasn't my series. You know, uh, Jamila Biggs was the writer creator, mm-hmm. and it was cool. And I, you know, I, it had been five years since I had written and directed, you know, something, and I felt like I needed to birth. Mm-hmm. Uh, a, a baby, a project, and so I started working on Giants. And Giants actually was a short film initially that I that I wrote. Ah, uh, maybe maybe like four. Ah, like honestly, like five years ago, because oh, wow. the short film really centered around the robbery scene. I got I got robbed at gunpoint. That's a true story. Got mm-hmm. robbed at gunpoint in L.A. When I got robbed at gunpoint, I had this conversation with my mother that is very similar to the conversation that Malachi has with his sister. And my mother basically told me that I needed to stay in L.A. because I still had to fight my giants. Right. And the story always stuck with me. And so throughout my time of living in Los Angeles and all of the ups and downs and the struggles, 
I always kept in the back of my mind that I still have to fight my giant, mm. that, you know, there are lions, there are bears, but once you defeat the giant, that's when you step into your destiny. And so um, when I was thinking about, okay, what do you have to say, James? What do you want to say as a writer and a creator? Um, that giant thing always stuck with me, and I took it, and I expound upon it, and this series was born. That's awesome. Love the series, by the way. Really good. So good. I appreciate um, it. So the themes in the show that we've seen were mental health, male sexuality, mm -hmm. and religion within the black community. Why did you want to highlight these themes? Because those things are important, and, you know, a lot of people aren't currently talking about that shit, mm -hmm. and those are current things that are prevalent in my life and my friends, things that I see, things that I care about, um, things that I want in particular black folks to start talking about. I, I feel like we need to liberate ourselves as it pertains to sexuality and homophobia mm -hmm. and and uh, mental health, and we are, uh, we stigmatize, we, we trivialize uh, these, these topics and these subjects, and people are struggling, and people are hurting, and people are damaged as a result of it. Right. And, you know, I believe in the power of media and the power of art, and I think Giants is a show that reflects not only, you know, people, people can see themselves, but I think people will see uh, their friends and their family in the show. And there's, there's a power in being able to see yourself. Mm -hmm. And once you kind of see yourself, I think you can start to understand uh, why you are the way you are and you can start making changes and ultimately you can start to heal. Yeah, awesome. So last week, yeah, Vanessa told us also like the backstory of you getting robbed was real. She told us, you know, the story behind that. Are there any other um, moments of the of your life within the show or in, in the characters? Uh, or? <laughs> So many, <laughs> there's so many hidden gems. Like, uh, you know, Vanessa and I, we've been friends since college. And so Journey and Malachi's relationship is very true to the relationship that I have with Vanessa. Right. Uh, so even starting at the pilot, uh, when Journey showed up at the house and said she couldn't stop her car, that was a true story. Uh, Vanessa really did that. Um, Vanessa actually used to deliver cupcakes uh, for a bakery. <laughs> Uh, Vanessa was dating this guy who borrowed five hundred dollars from her, and she, in return, borrowed five hundred dollars from me and never paid me back. Uh, uh, what else? Um, uh, yeah, the robbery was a true story. The escorting scene was not a true story. Oh, I'm about story. to say. I, oh, always, <laughs> I always get asked that question, and I'm like, no, I am not out here slinging dick. But, uh, I'm not slanging dick for coins. No, I am not. Uh, I have thought about it. Yes, I have. We all have. But, like, uh, how, much, how much did you pay for escort, right? <laughs> you know, it varies. It just depends. It depends on how uh, how rich your, your sugar daddy or your sugar mama is. Um, and it depends on what type of strange things you're doing for that change. <laughs> so it all really depends. All right. Um, and then what advice would you give to someone who wants to get into screenwriting or directing? Just do it. If you if you want to write, write. If you want to direct, direct. Like, figure out a way to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no excuse. You have a cell phone. And, you know, there, there are actual feature films that were completely shot on an iPhone. Mm -hmm. And so whatever it is you want to do, just do it. Find a, a space and a place to create and to, um, to exercise those muscles. Mm -hmm. And you can start small. You don't necessarily have to start big. Everyone starts somewhere. You know, I started, uh, this is Giants, like my fifth web series. And so um, a lot of people may not know that, but I've been at this for a while. And so you grow to, uh, you grow to new heights, you grow to new levels, but you got to start first. Wow. So what, what are your, I'm sorry, what are your other um, web series so people can check out? All right. So I did this web series called Fail. Uh, Fail actually starred King Batch before he was King Batch. Um, so oh. it was King Batch, it was myself, Vanessa, uh, our friend Tristan, our friend Jaren, and a mm -hmm. um, lady named Whitney. And then I did a series called uh, Debt Collectors. Okay. Um, and that was actually starring Jamila Biggs, the writer creator of. Oh, yeah, uh, first. Mm -hmm. And I did a series called Wingman Purgatory. And then, of course, I did first. Yeah. And also did uh, Get Your Life with Amanda Seals. Oh, yeah. Oh, I saw okay. you're on um, season two of that, right? 
season two, but I actually shot and co-directed season one. Oh, wow. So, yeah, that's how we started working together. And then Giants. Awesome. Awesome. All right, we're about to play a game now. Um, cool. Since Malachi loves a good gig, we're going to do like a would you rather. And the okay. first one is, would you rather be a vomit collector or a portable toilet cleaner? <laughs> what? The bill's got to get paid. The <laughs> bill's got to get paid. <laughs> a vomit collector. Because I can just hold the bucket and stand back really far, but I'm not cleaning nobody's shit. Like, I, I, I would rather collect the vomit. And then I would just, you know, toss it out real quick. Real but <laughs> if you got to clean a portable toilet, you got to actually be in there. Yeah. And it'd be hot. <laughs> it'd be hot in the joint. Yeah. So I'm going to I'm gonna uh, catch the vomit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So deodorant tester, like you have to sniff armpits of others. Uh-huh. Or you have the uh, breath order, odor tester. Oh, my God. Uh, uh, deodorant. <laughs> <laughs> Deodorant all day. Yeah, some people's breath is like deadly. Because you know, with the deodorant, you got the deodorant is gonna kind of mask the musk true, a little true. bit. You know, when somebody breath is is is, is kicking, that's that's torture. I couldn't do that. <laughs> As a I job, no, no. Nah, nah. um, <laughs> okay, grave digger or roadkill cleaner? Uh, grave digger. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Work out. That yeah. is. That's true. That's true. It'd be scary. You got to do it at night. <laughs> um, sewer cleaner or crime scene cleaner? A crime scene killer. I mean, killer. Crime killer. Scene That's not an option. <laughs> crime scene cleaner. <laughs> Yo, who wrote this? <laughs> Mary, you wrote this? It's, this is Mary. Oh, this is Mary. Yeah. <laughs> it was me. Okay, last one. Hands out flyers in a baby costume, like large diaper, pacifier, and everything, or a giant chicken. Remember, you 6'5". <laughs> chicken. 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 You're going to be a chicken? Yeah. Did you guys see that video on Instagram of the giant chicken? We're doing what? Oh, no, I think there was one of those like, big chickens. Like no, chicken oh, no. It was a chicken the size of a man. Mm-mm. Oh, no, I did not see that. I'm going to look it up. Okay, so today we're discussing the season finale of Giants titled Unpack These Bags. In this episode, Malachi, Journey, and Dave must unpack the bags they've been carrying. So let's get into it. Empty, in a, empty apartment. So Malachi and Journey, they officially moved out. Malachi in with Aday and Journey with her sister. So Aday gets a package and then his mom calls. You know, he's hype. He's like, hey, mom. But then his face, like, his face said it all for me. I'm right. like, his pappy gone. Uh, that's, what, that's what I thought. I was like, I'm like, pappy, yeah. So later, Malachi comes in to Aday's spot and Aday is like, hey, roomie. Mal's like, nope, this is Just temporary. <laughs> Don't get too comfortable. <laughs> Um, and then Dave was like, you know, I'm going to put your name on the lease. Like he was hype. Like oh, yeah. you're moving in. You're my roommate forever. So, um, a day phone rings and he got to take it, his mom again. And, but he says, you know, how's pop doing? So I'm like, all right, pop is, pop is okay. He's not dead, right. Some, but something's going on. He's sick or something. Right. Um, so then we go to journey. Tall caramel. He finally showed up. Tall caramel. That's his name. Finally. Um, finally decided to make an finally, appearance. I want to slap him, but whatever. <laughs> And Journey asked him, you know, how was how was your trip? And he said, you know, it was good. She said, well, it seems like it was because you extended it for a whole week mm-hmm. and you never checked up on me. Mm-hmm. And he's just like, yeah, sorry about that. My schedule got a little, a little hectic. Stop with the lies. Stop with the lies. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> but first he came in trying to make small talk like, oh, you having a party? Oh, okay, it's your new place. Like, like shut up. Do you know what you here for to talk about? Cut it out. Then we go to Malachi. He's unpacking his bags. And a day tells him that his dad had a heart attack while yeah. at the doctor's appointment. And then Malachi's like, oh, my God, you know, is he okay? Everything all right? He's like, yeah, you know, they're just going to keep him overnight to take some tests. Malachi's like, did you talk to him? And the day says, nope. Malachi's like, he isn't taking any calls. Like, what's up? And then Aday's like, no, I hear him in the background when I, I heard him in the background when right. I spoke with my mom. And so Malachi's, so what's the problem? Like, he's like very defensive. Like, what's up? Like, yeah, why? Right. Him? Like, what's up? <laughs> So what's the problem? You're still not talking to me. 
You fucking serious? Is your dad really that stubborn? Yeah, he is. Your dad's not talking to his only son because, what, you decided to be a dancer instead of an engineer? Yo, that's petty, bro. I know that's your pops, but... That's not it. What you mean? That's not the reason why he's not talking to me. But you told me. I know. I didn't tell you the full story. I, I said, hold up. Well, wait a minute. What's the reason today? <laughs> what's going on? And I guess, well, well, what's the story then? Like, tell me what it is. But um, then we, I was at the edge of my seat for this scene because he's like, well, that's not the real story. And then we go to the next scene and then tall caramel telling Journey about like his on and off ex-girlfriend four years and they were on when they moved to L.A. So I'm like, you had a whole girlfriend and you was out here on Tinder? A full girlfriend, yeah. And you was out on Tinder? Like, what? I mean, that's, that's what the kids do I mean, that's, do what the, that's what the kids do. They sure do. <laughs> so, but I feel like Journey dodged the bullet with this one, so she should have been happy. Mm. So he goes on to say how he felt it would be wrong if, you know, it, if he went to ATL and, it, you know, didn't reach out to her or whatever. And long story short, they went to lunch, talked for hours. Now similar similar to him and Journey's first date, they went to lunch and talked <laughs> for hours. And now, you're right, they're back in love, and he'll never stop loving her. He made me so mad. Yeah, I didn't like that he like went to her house to tell her that. He was like, "Well, can you tell? Can you say something? Like, what do you want me to say to that? Good luck. <laughs> Have a nice life." Like, I, but I'd I rather him tell her in her in um her face than like text it to her. True, but or like, not show up at all. He was ghosting. I guess he felt he owed it to her. Like, but I don't know. I didn't like that. <laughs> you still with us? I'm here. Yeah, oh. I like listening to you guys. Recap. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, he hung up. Go ahead. <laughs> so, okay. He's like, ahead. well, like, no. say something. I don't know. Like, how do you feel? Do you really care how I feel? Like, that's what I feel like. Mm. Honestly. Do you really care? Because you're still going to be with this girl. It's not like right. you're going to, like, break up with her to be with me. Right. Like so, that, so, I don't, yeah, I don't understand what he wanted her to say. Like, tell me, tell me how you feel. Like, I would have been like, can you leave, please? That's how yeah, I feel. Leave. Get out. So, she's like... All right, you yes. want to know how I feel? Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you how I feel. I feel like there's a huge lump in my throat, which sucks because it won't let me swallow. I feel like my heart is where my stomach is supposed to be. I feel so stupid for letting you in in every sense of the word. I feel betrayed, and perhaps not by you, but maybe by the universe. But she feels more betrayed about the universe because, you know, it feels like everything she wants, she can't get. And she right. thought that he was going to be it, like the one to save her and like bring her happiness in. Look at her, broke, broke her heart. Right. So um, she's like, is that how, that's how I feel. Is that what you wanted to hear? I guess not. Because <laughs> he's silent. He's well, he, silent. What are you going to say? <laughs> Right. Oh, my bad. Right. Like that's what I was just like. What was the point of you going there? Yeah. You were looking like you for played her, and right. you knew how much she liked you. She was oh, an L O B E you with you. But go ahead. So, so next scene. A day's also confessing. Um, he says like when he was in grad school, he was in this relationship that got really serious, really fast. Kind of like blindsided him because he felt like head over heels for this person, and that kind of scared him. Mm hmm. Uh, but. He was moving to L.A., and he knew that, but he didn't know how to tell this person that I'm just going to leave. Right. So he that, hit him with the peace sign. He hit him with the peace sign, <laughs> sent a text saying, bye. I see you when I see you. It's been you. real. It's been real. Thanks for, thanks for all your love. <laughs> this ain't going to work. <laughs> He's like, when I landed, I got like a million text messages and missed calls from Courtney. Who's Courtney? We don't know yet. We don't know. Um, he's like, but I ignored them all, and I felt ashamed, like, because I didn't know what to say. I'm like, come on today. You could at least return that call, like, or just say, you know, I don't know what you could have did, yeah. but that was not the right way. And Malachi's like, you sent a text? Right. <laughs> Bruh, come on, a text. You sent a text? He was like, yeah, like, but you know the saying, hurt people hurt people? Well, yeah. Courtney's way of getting back to me was to send intimate photos to my dad. Ooh. And Malika was like, damn. I was like, Courtney, why? Why would you do that, Courtney? He's like, Courtney's a guy, right? <laughs> and the day was like, yeah, how did you know? Boy, we all knew. Ooh. He said, I always knew. It never mattered. No. That's real. That's a good friend. Oh, yeah. And so he was like, so what your pop say? 
and Isaiah said like he, he was so upset he kept call, he kept saying like tell me it's not true and like I couldn't lie to him so he said I had like disgraced the family and God um, I know that's what hurt him the most mm-hmm. he said the thought of me going to hell because of this like I right. tried to tell him I still love God and I still go to church I'm still gonna go to Bible me study I'm gonna do everything to guys like has nothing to do with that like it's not gonna change any of the, any, of the, any of those things mm-hmm. and he said one of the last things he said to me was to read Matthew seven twenty one. Did you read it? Yeah. <laughs> what does it say? <laughs> <laughs> what does it say? Not everyone who calls on God will go to the kingdom of heaven. That they will say they've done good in the name of God. And God will say, I never knew you. Depart from me. I know you not. And Malachi is like, well, you believe that? And um, Ade says, I don't, I don't know, but I think about it a lot. Mm-hmm. So Malachi hit him with uh, something from his past. He said, let me like, tell you something. <laughs> I used to write. I used to write in college, right? <laughs> Took this class on religion my freshman year. Freshman year? Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> um, and he said, it got me thinking about how God thinks. And I wrote this poem called, I Know You. You want to hear it? Yeah. He was speaking from the heart and telling Azay, like, you know, not to be ashamed because you're still worthy of love. And so they hug it out. And although the poem but was recited to Azay, I feel like Malachi needed to hear those words too. Yeah, he needed to hear it for himself too. Because the whole poem was basically how God feels about you. Right. And my favorite line was, come to me and I'll set you free. That insecurity in your flesh is not your identity. Mm. Oh, I think I have that too. The whole line, yeah. (laughs) Name someone else that loves you so much. They'll carry your shame. Shame and guilt, the burden I've broken and upon my shoulders they rest. Rest in me when you're tired and weary. Come to me and I'll give you my best. Oh, come to me and I'll set you free. That insecurity in your flesh is not your identity. To me, it's as small as a flea in a field of lilies. And that one blemish doesn't compare to the field's vast beauty I see in you, my child. You are my beloved. You can fall again and again in a day and still be worthy of my love because I love you in spite of and simply because I created you. Fiercely, perfectly, divinely, and wondrously too. The whole thing was so deep. It was so good. So good. Um, So... After he was done, the day just went in for the hug. Like, he had no words. No like, words. He was just like, you love me, and, and I love you. <laughs> I would tell you, it was just a very emotional, like, moment. I think I did. Who's a D? Who's a D? Who's a D? <laughs> Y'all were there making up characters. Yeah, I'm like, so a D was like, um, yeah. So, I guess, you know, it's what he needs to hear this whole time, that God still loves him, and it's, like, going to be okay. Yeah, it's definitely going to be okay. It's going to be all right. We're going to be all right. So, we're going to be all right. So next scene, we see Journey. She's she's down. Stay sad. Mama got a whole bottle. A whole bottle. A whole bottle. Um, and then we go to a memory, and they're like talking about how they're about to be in their thirties. You know, Mal is hype. He's like, I'm ready. You know, I'm. She was like, Not me. Not me. Take it back. Not me, girl. <laughs> not me. <laughs> it's like I thought I would have been, you know, way further along than this, which is real. Right. Like, I feel like we all. Fi- um, feel like that at some point. Yeah, exactly. When you after you hit over twenty five, it's like, wait a minute. Right. Mm-hmm. What, is, what is my life about? What <laughs> What's am I happening? Doing? Exactly. Mama is drunk though. Yeah. So she's <laughs> taking a whole bottle, basically Falling to the head. Over and everything. <laughs> so and while this is happening, um, Malachi opened up his package and it's the painting from the um, that the lady made. Yeah, from episode one. But did she really need a new model? To paint? <laughs> she just wanted to see. A she just. <laughs> I feel like it was just the upper level. Like, lady, she just wants to see some eye candy. Cut it out. <laughs> um, so then, next scene, um, Mal calls his sister. Um, she's trying to ask him, like, what's going on? And Mal's like, I'm good. I'm great. You know, never been better. She's like, that's okay, really? Well, mom told me what happened. 
So um, he's like, you call to yell at me? She's like, no, that's not it. Sometimes you have to fight for your stuff. Like, when mom told me, it made me think of your favorite Bible story. He's like, I got one of those. Right. What? I read the Bible. <laughs> I like the Ooh. Bible. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so she's like, yeah, boy, stop playing, you know. He's like, oh, yeah, David and Goliath. Uh, but what made you think about that? Well, you know, before David was a king, he was a shepherd. And his job was to protect his sheep. So when the lion came along and tried to eat one of his sheep, David grabbed him by the beard, hit him over the head, and killed him. And when the bear came, he did the same thing. You know, I was thinking what the people might have thought when they heard about what David had done. They probably said he was stupid or it was unsafe to fight a lion and a bear because it could have killed them. But your boy David, man, he was a G. He wasn't scared. <laughs> so when Goliath came to town and started terrorizing everyone, David was ready to boss up because he knew the same God that had delivered him from the mouth of the lion and the mouth of the bear was the same God that was going to deliver him from the hand of the giant. So she said, you know, those idiots that robbed you were just your lion and your bear, and you fought for what was yours. But Malachi, you still have to fight for your giant, and that's what God is preparing you for. I'm like, whoo, that was deep. That was deep. That was deep. And I know I know a lot of people are like, why is the show called Giants? I know we had yeah, like, we in had the asked that question too. So I feel like now that makes even puts everything into into perspective, which is really cool. Right. Um, so now we go into the next scene. A day is in the dance studio and he decides to send a hey big head text to Courtney. He sure did. He sent the hey big head text. Thinking about you? Are you really? <laughs> he was. This person kind of ruined your life. He yeah. He sent intimate photos to your dad. Why do you want to talk to But he person? was he was hurt though. And a day loved that was like the love of his life before he left. Mm-mm. No. <laughs> so I guess he just I don't know. So, um, and then we go into a montage, you know, Mal is running, Journey. Exhausted himself. Yeah. Out. Yeah. That boy He's running for his run. life. Journey, she's tearing up the kitchen looking for something. Something. And then a day is dancing, quite beautifully, might I add. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's <laughs> a dancer. Yes. Us. So I think, um, I think a day received a text message back, but we don't get to see what it says. Right? Oh, really? Did it say that? I don't. I don't know. He looked at his phone. Um, yeah, and then, was. Yeah. So, um, and then Mal, he stopped running, like, midway, and then he just stopped, like, in the middle of the street. So, I think at this point, he, like, kind of made the decision to stop running from God. Mm-hmm. I think so. We, go face right. them giants. Yes. Um, and then we go see... We, Journey. Journey. Girl, what you doing? Girl, what are you doing? She's trying to commit suicide by tying, like, a garbage bag over her head. And a fire extinguisher. Yeah, I'm like, baby girl, what you doing? Oh my god. I'm like, no. I'm what like, that's not doing? the answer. What you doing? <laughs> what you doing, girl? And Stop this it. is in your sister's house yeah. where her kids live. Yeah. What you doing? Yeah. She was in a low place. Wow. wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, but she stops herself. Yeah. So I was like, all right, girl. Yeah, because at first you thought it was going to happen, but then the, at the end of the episode, the bag opens. I'm like, okay, good. Yeah, I was shook. I wasn't was ready. Like pounding like I was crazy. not ready for that. I would. I couldn't handle it. No. <laughs> um. All right. So that is episode six of the Giants finale. So now we're going to get into the um, questions, comments, and concerns. a part of the conversation too so send us your qcc's and we'll read them on the show and give y'all our thoughts email us at seriously podcast or dm comment or tweet us at seriously podcast oh sorry email us at seriously <laughs> podcast at, at gmail.com or dm comment or tweet us at seriously podcast <laughs> my bad y'all all right so we were scrolling through the comments on youtube mm-hmm. um the first one we have is wait i want to say my okay, question go ahead. oh first. go ahead so that poem that you had was like extremely powerful. Was was that the same backstory, or was it? Was there a different backstory? Um, for backstory in terms of why I wrote the poem. Yeah. Was it because you took the religion? Yeah, you took the class, the the religion class, and all that stuff, or 
Oh, no, oh, okay, no, 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 okay. No, I just, I, I actually wrote that poem because I was in a play where I had to play Christ. So it was a spoken word oh. play. Ooh. And I was tasked with writing all of, so all of the, it was a bunch of poets in a play and it was for Easter. And I got cast as Jesus. And so I had to write all of these poems from the perspective of Christ. Mm-hmm. And so that was one of the poems that I wrote. And it just, you know, fit into the series. And so a lot of things um, were somewhat divine because when I wrote this series, I didn't plan anything. I just sat down and I wrote Mm -hmm. and I I just, you know, kind of poured out onto the page and I really figured out, okay, what do I want to say? And I would write one episode with no idea of what was going to happen the next episode. Um, And then when I got to Uh, episode six and I was trying to figure out how I wanted to write the scene or what Malachi should say to a day and I thought you know what about he shared a poem with him and we had already set up um, when Malachi and Journey are in the bed and Malachi says you know I'll be a spoken word artist and Journey says oh that poem you used to do I know you that wasn't initially scripted but Nessa just said that oh wow yeah, she ad-libbed that line because she and I did that play together. And so that was a play that James used to, I mean, that was a, a, a poem that James used to recite. And so she, you know, just threw it in into the show. And so when I got to the finale, it just worked perfect that I used that poem. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it was all, it was all divine. And, yeah. you know, things just kind of connected on its own. Divine. That's awesome. That's a cool story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, Okay, um, so so one comment that we have um, from Carol Allen, she said, I wish I could express in words how the season of Giants touched me. I have been struggling lately, and to know that God knows me gives me hope. I'm, I've am i been battling um, rheumatoid arthritis and loneliness, my, my bear and lion, and I'm still standing. I have thought about taking my life, but now realize my life is not owned. I have no right to take what I didn't create. Thanks for your kindness and support. I say support because, like myself, this series is saving, giving new life and perspective to someone. How does it feel that this story, like, your whole storyline, like, touching people in this way in such a, like, vulnerable do, state? Do, you know, do people share, like, their real, personal stories with you? Yeah, we get a lot of messages. And it's uh, very humbling. And it's a confirmation that we are doing exactly what we're supposed to be doing Mm. and it is an expression of us serving a purpose greater than ourselves that you know this show uh is much more than us wanting to be writers and actors and it's much more the entertainment but we uh i have very clear intentions when i I wrote this series Mm -hmm. and i wrote this series uh, from a place of wanting to uh, express myself and express what I had, what what I wanted to say about the world and the people around right. me, and I knew that um, if I created a show that was grounded in truth, and I created a show that had the foundation of spiritual out, that the foundation of uh, of spirituality, but was not um, bound in religion that I could create something that could liberate people and that could set people free and that could touch people and it wouldn't hit them over the head, you know, sometimes like a script, like a, like a sermon, you know, does. But, you know, I believe that the best sermon that we could ever preach is your life and the life that you lead Mm -hmm. and being able to show characters leading and living a life is, I think the best sermon that anyone could, could watch. Um, because, you know, you, you learn and you're able to receive it in a different way. So it's humbling and I'm appreciative that people are connecting to the series and that they are really taking something valuable away from it. Yeah, definitely. Um, this comment was interesting. Charles, um, X, 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 X. Um, the, this episode should have ended with journey with the back over her head. Didn't see it coming, but the suspense until the next scene season would have been incredible. Uh, much respect. I mean, it could have been suspenseful, but I don't think I could take that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, that was a very clear choice. It was a very specific and distinct choice that I made to not end with that bag over her head for several reasons. Um, it was actually a debate amongst my team and myself. Uh, mm-hmm. Some thought that I should. You know, we had been leaving you guys with cliffhangers 
this entire season. And it, it would have been a nice uh, cliffhanger, I guess, to uh, to get folks to come back and watch season two. But, uh, you know, I felt I had a responsibility as a content creator uh, to end on a note that for anyone who's watching this show, who is uh, struggling with depression, who has reached the end of their rope, uh, the, the message needed to be very clear that uh, there is hope that um, uh, that suicide is not the answer yeah. and that if you can just hold on, that there is light at the end of the tunnel. And so I didn't know if we were going to have a season two, you know, okay. at first, you know, yeah. when I first finished shooting. Um, but even, you know, as I was editing, I had the choice to, uh, to, to end the show with the bag over her head. And I just decided, I decided that hope was a, a, a greater hook than suspense. Yeah. yeah. That if I can leave you guys with hope, I think that's enough to bring you back for a season two. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. I think the idea um, to not have her, you know, commit suicide definitely spoke volumes. Like, mm-hmm. to have her take the bag off of yeah. her head. It shows that, you know, she did, she's not giving up. Mm-hmm. So I like that. How would you describe Malachi in one word? Ah. Uh, Struggle. <laughs> failure. <laughs> failure? You said failure? Yeah. Yeah, he's very rebellious. He's rebelling. Oh, rebellious. I thought okay. you said failure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah, he's very rebellious. He 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 does his own thing. Yeah, he's different. Mm-hmm. Um, do you identify with Malachi in any way, and how so? A lot of ways. Um, you know, I've had my own struggles with uh, my faith, and I've had moments of of not knowing what my purpose was mm-hmm. and knowing that I had a very strong calling on my life, but I did not know how and what ways God wanted to use me. Um, and so in those ways, I relate to Malachi and I gave Malachi those traits from James. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. What about journey in a day? Where do uh, they root from? Yeah. You know, journey, uh, I- I fucking love Journey. Like, <laughs> Journey is, um, she's that, she's that free spirit. Journey is, is, there's a freeness to her yeah. that some may, uh, confuse with her being manic, mm-hmm. but it's really, you know, a combination of, you know, she is manic and she has her highs and her lows, but at her core, she's just a very free individual. And I love that about that character, and that's something that I've worked on, you know, uh, for myself, something that I've, uh, you know, just always wanted to possess. Mm -hmm. And with a day, a day is an artist. You know, I'm an artist. A day has uh, really Christian, you know, parents. I have Mm -hmm. really Christian parents. And a day made the decision to pursue his art. Right. When he could have taken the corporate route he could have went and became an engineer but he decided to follow his passion yeah and to follow his truth and to walk in his truth and that is a daily goal that i have for myself and that's something that i made the decision yeah. to do when i moved to los angeles to be a filmmaker with no job no car no savings no family no friends i just came because i knew that um i wanted to do this and i had to figure out a way to make it happen Awesome. Wow. So I know in episode was it four when um, Malachi was talking to Lay at the bus stop. Mm-hmm. So she says, you know, he. What did she say? A revival. Revival is coming. So what is the revival like? Did that? Did we miss? What? What's the revival? What would be the? Is that season two? It's coming. Yeah. It's coming. Season okay. Two. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Okay. She said. She said a revival is coming, and you have a big say in it. Right. And you feel that you may not have the words, but just show up and he'll give them to yeah. you. Mm-hmm. Um, and the revival actually started with uh, with the day. That was what I was going to uh, say. So, uh-huh. uh, yeah. And so the, the revival is, you know, it's, 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 it's kind of left up to interpretation. Um, I know what I feel in terms of what it is. It's almost very similar to a lot of folks say that there is a resurgence uh, coming even in Hollywood mm-hmm. as far as 
black content creators and the types of television shows that we are seeing being produced and even the uh, the the type and level of web series that are, are being produced on YouTube that is also a part of the revival it's a part of the new renaissance the resurgence of um uh, uh black consciousness um mm-hmm. uh, creativity and uh the hope is that we'll also see bits and pieces of that in giants as well awesome awesome okay so right, my last question is um i know you can't give us too much on like what's going to happen in season two but are there any themes that you would like to highlight that you think black folks don't talk about like how you had you know religion and um male sexuality and mental health are there any other themes that you're thinking about highlighting Mm, good question. Uh, you know, we're figuring it out. Like, we're currently writing season two. We just started our writer's room. Mm-hmm. And so um, I don't have any pressing issues on my heart at this particular moment that I know I'm going to throw into season two. Mm-hmm. It's really a continuation of the things that we've started. So we'll okay. continue to explore that uh, sexuality. For me, in particular, uh, black male identity is really important to me. I've had, I've had so many conversations and so many arguments with friends uh, as it pertains to how black males are able to identify and how we're able to operate within society. And I'm somewhat on my own mini mission to liberate black men across the globe. Um, in particular, black men here in America. And I'm committed to showing black men in a very different light than we've been allowed mm. to operate in media. Um, so we'll continue to see that in a day, and we'll continue to see that in Malachi and the rest of the characters that are presented um, in this show. But at the core, you know, I, I want to be liberated, and I want other people to be liberated because I feel like that's when we are our truest selves. And you know, one of the missions with Giants is to encourage people to live more out loud and to live more freely and to not be ashamed of your Giants and to understand that we're all going through shit and that's fine. Right. But we do have the ability to slay our Giants at the end of the day. And if you can slay your Giant, that's when you can step into the fullness of your destiny. So. Yes, gems, gems. Oh, yeah, dropping gems the entire season. <laughs> Whole season. <laughs> All right, so that's it for our finale of Giants. We want to thank James for joining us. Um, We had so much fun breaking down this episode and this whole season in general. I loved it. Um, Please feel free to share any um, upcoming projects and where our listeners can find you. Yeah, so upcoming projects is Giants Season 2. We're currently in pre-production. We're writing the season right now, but we need your help to make it happen. You can visit season2giants.com to donate. The campaign ends May 1st, so please make a contribution. We are independent filmmakers, and uh, this is an expensive uh, craft and, and an expensive undertaking, so we appreciate all of your support. I want to shout you guys out. Thank you so much for supporting the series. It means the world. You can find me at J.R. Bland on Instagram, on Twitter, and you can find me at jamesblandfilms.com. Cool, cool. Awesome. Thank you, James. Thank you so much. Uh, No worries. It's a pleasure. Yes. We look forward to everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I'll see y'all season two. Season Season two. two. Bye. Season two. (laughs) <laughs> All right, bye-bye. If you're enjoying the show, please rate us on iTunes, follow us on SoundCloud, and hit those like buttons on there, too. Also use the hashtag SeriouslyRecap, S-E-R-I-E-S-L-Y-R-E-C-A-P. Let us know you're listening. Stay on the lookout on all of our social media accounts to find which web series we will be covering next. Thanks, guys, so much for tuning in. Bye. Bye, y'all. Bye. All right. Bye.